It's a really big moment for the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. It's also a signal, of course, of that growing cooperation that we're seeing between the Middle East, between Hong Kong, Greater China as well. Uh, so let's discuss that, the outlook for this ETF in particular, and bring in a Bloomberg Intelligence's ETF analyst, Rebecca Sin. So uh, you, of course, track this sector very closely. You've been waiting this, this debut this morning. Just talk us through the significance of it. So this is a significant uh, day because not only is this one of the largest launches globally for ETFs, they have more than $1 billion in assets under management, but it's also a historic moment for Hong Kong Exchange. This is the largest launch that they've had all year, and ultimately this now gives investors access to Saudi Arabia um, in Asia Pacific. So it's a historical moment um, because one, we don't have many ETFs like this, and this is also the largest Saudi ETF that's been listed globally. And so this is a monumentous uh, day for them, and it's very exciting. So what stands out about investing in, in Saudi Arabian companies in particular versus what you see, for instance, for other Gulf economies? So I think what's interesting uh, for this market is that the Saudi market is expected to more than double by 2030. Goldman Sachs estimated that they'll become a top 10 economy um, by 2030. And so there's a lot of uh, interest into this market. But also this gives investors access to Middle East now. So everyone knows of the name of Saudi Aramco. This ETF tracks the FTSE Saudi Arabia um, index. and so ultimately Ultimately, it's very financial heavy, and I think a lot of investors in Hong Kong particularly like this. If you look at the Hong Kong market, it's very uh, bank in intensive. So 48% of the ETF is tracking financial. It also has um, telecom companies um, as well as energy. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the amount that's being committed, I think it's around the one billion mark you said that's been subscribed so far. Who exactly is making up that investor base? So we don't know exactly, um, but ultimately the public investment fund is heavily involved. You know, we expect that most of that money is coming as seed capital um, from them. They were here themselves at the launch today, and so we believe that you know this is a signal of their interest to the Asia market, specifically to Hong Kong. But this also allows opportunity for retail investors and a lot of sovereign wealth funds to participate. Participate. One of the challenges with ETF is that oftentimes you need a certain amount of AUM before the private banks, um, the, uh, the asset managers, the uh, sovereign wealth funds can invest. And because they've reached the one billion mark, it's very significant because now it can be available on a lot of product offerings for institutional clients. And so we can see uh, more flows to come from institutional clients because they've reached this target of asset center management, but also more retail participation. What does this signal about the future cooperation that we could expect to see, not just between Hong Kong and Saudi Arabia, but also mainland China and Saudi Arabia? So one of the interesting things is that the Shanghai Stock Exchange and the Saudi Exchange signed a MOU in September. And so this ultimately is a connect program that's going to connect the Shanghai Exchange to the Saudi Exchange and vice versa. It's kind of like in Hong Kong, we have the Bond Connect, we have ETF Connect, and one of the products that they're going to launch is ETF. And so ultimately, this is going to give access, uh, it, it, it's going to give uh, investors access access to ETFs. And so we can expect that by next year, uh, we could see this pot ETF potentially cross-listed on the Saudi exchange uh, through CSOP's uh, Pine Bridge, Hua Tai Pine Bridge connection. And so this ultimately gives investors in Saudi Arabia access to uh, it, uh, onshore uh, Shanghai listed ETFs, but then investors in Shanghai or mainland China can then invest into Saudi Arabia. And so ultimately it's a two-way connect program um, that's never been done before and this ETF could potentially be the first uh, that's listed on this program. So just really a signal of that growing cooperation between the two. All right, Rebecca Sin, that was a Bloomberg ETF analyst. Rebecca Sin with us here from the exchange.